This is what I'm feeling like. Da, 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 da. Let me tell you what I'm feeling like. Da, 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 da. Yo, yo, what up, though, people? Like to welcome you back to the Keep It a C No podcast. As always, I am your boy Brown. To the left of me, we got Vito. Vito, what up, though? I can't call it. Okay, okay. I see you say represent, represent with the jacket. Yeah, you know. Ain't no doubt. Uh, shout out to everybody that's tuned in. If this your first time tuning in, salute to you. Do us a favor. Please hit the sub button, like button, and the bell so you can stay notified when we drop new content. Don't be afraid to leave a comment. If you agree with something, disagree with something, want to correct us on something, or if you just want to call us an Uber, let us know in the comments. Just make sure you keep it a C note, and please share this video with someone that likes to talk sports and entertainment just like you so that we can all talk that talk together. Funniest thing I've seen all weekend. Well, before the weekend started, Drizzy Drake dropped a new album called For All the Dogs. And I'm going to say this respectfully, it should have been titled For All the Garbage Cans. That album is horrible. I listened to the album open-minded more than once, more than one day. I can only vibe to two and a half tracks. The album, to me, is horrible. I don't know what Drake got going on right now. I don't know if he just think that he got the Midas touch. He can just put anything out. But what's funny about it is I forgot the album drop, went on Twitter, and everybody's putting up fire emojis, gold emojis about Drake's new album. I believe it's horrible. Did you hear the album, Vito? I didn't hear the whole thing. I only got the uh, song 10. And my opinion is... It's not for everybody. Is it for you? All Drake albums sound the same to me. So it's the same. I feel like there's some good songs on it, and there's some okay songs on it, and some songs that ain't for me. Okay, so you made it to track 10. Out of them 10 songs, one I know for sure, J. Cole and... Uh, the, Sizz- the John with Sizz I like, too. The John with Sizz. Okay, so you got two that you like. That was the two, ha- maybe three. I can't think of that. That was the half a song that I like. Because I kind of like that song, but it kind of reminds me like of when Kendrick just had his last album and he had the song where he arguing back and forth with the girl. It kind of gave me that vibe. They did it a little different because he like, sis, go ahead and talk you talk to these girls. But it kind of gave me that vibe like he took that from Kendrick. So that's why I say two and a half songs. But you can never go wrong. You didn't get to this song yet. Because when I was listening to it, the first two times, I mean, well, the first time I listened to it, I got to track three. I wasn't feeling it. I had to go to the playlist. I found what I was looking for, 8 a.m. in Charlotte. Anything with an 8 a, uh, a.m. on it is usually a good song from Drake. Listened to that and went back. So I got that song, and the song with J. Cole is the only two, like, bangers on there. Okay. Um, But, uh... Oh, let me say this though. With the the uh, name of for for the, all the dogs, uh-huh. it should have been less R and B and more of a straight straight to the point hip hop album with that name. Right. In my opinion. Right. All right. Now Joe Buttons, he was recently talking about the album. He has some things to say. Well, he actually said this. This this is like Yachty rapping. This is like he rapping for the children. And that's my, yo, dog, I had to look up how old this was when I finished listening to the album. Mm -hmm. You are 36. Your birthday is in 20 days. I Googled that too. You will be 37 (laughs) years old. Get the away from some of these younger niggas and stop f***ing these 25-year-olds. I'm listening to the album. You're a 37 year old billionaire. I get it that you appeal to the world. Loving you about Cole. Like, my shit is happening in reverse. Like, with Cole, he used to rap about kid shit. I'm a grown ass, like, real Jersey City. I want to hear how you lost your fucking virginity. And then he started to grow up. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then the rapping sounded the rapping like an up. adult rapping. Mm-hmm. I'm want to hear 
adult Drake rapping for adult people. What's your thoughts on that, Vito? Keep it a C note. Uh, it depends like how you feel. Like my personal opinion, I understand rapping for your core audience, but I also understand you trying to have longevity in the game and appealing to a certain audience. Right. So maybe like this his last album was the joint with the uh, disco beats. Right. That was for a certain audience. This album, they say it's based more so on the younger uh, uh, audience. Okay. And maybe the next one might be for us. Okay. Um. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you on what you're saying because th- that's keeping him relevant. Uh, rapping with all the new uh, younger kids and the younger artists coming in and rapping their t- or making music for them because he's always going to give you one or two. Even though if we might not like it on the album, he's always going to give you one or two joints that they're going to play in the clubs. Mm-hmm. And you still got a lot of people to go to the clubs. But... If Joe Button is talking about on a pen game as far as rapping for the kids, I would agree with that. He got, it's like his bars disappeared on his album. He said he left her hanging like a dry cleaner. <laughs> now that's, his, that's he, come on, man. He said. Yo, he, did you hear he said something about, I feel like I'm bi because she's one of the guys? You hear that one? No, I'm pause. I yeah. missed that one. Yeah. He said on the joint with uh J. Cole, he said something, something, something about the studio. Then he said they send me their verses and they terrible like a two year old. I said, yo, what? But that's no that, that no, no man. man. He, he ain't saying shit like no, that. No, man, that's cat in the hat chat. That's dumbing it down to the, the hey, fifth man. power. True, but you don't remember Method Man bars? Must have man got a million cat hat bars. Yeah, I, I could believe that too. I mean, yeah, I know about the. You sent me a couple Method Man joints, but you know, pause on that. Um, let me ask you this though, because I already believe J Cole killed this song. He had the best verse on the Drake song, so I want to ask you a question because I know you like Drake more as far as the songs go and all of that. Mm-hmm. Has, because Joe Buttons, remember before I told you I couldn't relate to J. Cole at first because he was rapping about losing virginity. Have you seen in that clip Joe Button actually said the same thing? I don't know. That's a, a good song, though. No, no, it was a good song. But what I'm saying is, for, it, it, I do agree with Joe Buttons. Like, J. Cole went backwards. Like, he was rapping more for the kids. Now he on his grown man thing, and it, it kind of reversed with uh, Drake. But... I want to ask you, Vito, has J. Cole surpassed Drake? As far as what? If it, if we're going off of lyrics, I got Cole over Drake. But songs, I got Drake over Cole. You still got him because yeah. li- li- J. Cole does phenomenal things to get... He just had a he just had an album went like, what, Diamond with no yeah. videos? And, I, that, the best, that's amazing. The best comparison I can give. Jay-Z and Nas. I give Nas lyrics over Jay, but I give Jay the songs over Nas. Hey, listen, man. I got Jay, I got Jay Cole has surpassed Drake and he makes better songs. Nah. I can listen to a I can listen to more more of a, a J. Cole album than I can a Drake album. Drake, I'm telling you, skip, skip, skip. You listen, you probably can of an album, but we're talking about bangers. I feel like Drake got more than Cole. He might, he might got more bangers, but again, it would see. I don't never base it off banger, you know. What I mean, I don't base it off of the stuff that you call hits. I, I need to be able to vibe straight through an album. I need to be able to. Well, it ain't many people that I can vibe straight through an album. It's no, but like J three. Cole last album, you can play damn near half, uh, more than half of that album. Um, uh, compared to Drake's, where you can only play three, four songs, bro. Come on, man. Shit, it That's might n- be two or two or three people I can think of right off top that I could play. Probably listen to all we do. That's Jay Z, Rick Ross, and I, I can't even say uh, the new Little Wayne because I don't like all his shit. I don't know, man. I think J Cole, and to be honest, this is a bigger shock to me that I'm about to tell you this one, Vito. 
Because I'd be agreeing with you on the boring stuff when you, I just don't agree when you say Nas effect. <laughs> but right now, the last couple albums, I can listen to more of a Kendrick album than a Drake album, no bro. Way. Yes. Even, yes. Even the last one? Yes, the last album is better than this Drake album, bro. You now, is... listen. Well, my personal opinion, especially with albums, it takes a while for most albums to grow me. Not many albums hit me the first week they come out. Right, I gotta listen to it a couple of times. But with that Kendrick Jones. That's no, no bueno. <laughs> well, we're going to come back in a couple weeks and still talk about the Drake album right. again. See if it does have that type of effect. But I know it's not going to have that effect. That joint is trash, bro. I'm keeping it a C-note. Um, what's your thoughts on it, people? Keep it a C-note. What is it? First of all, has J. Cole surpassed Drake as far as making better music? Yes, no. Keep it a C-note. Was Kendrick Lamar's last album better than Drake's new album for all the dogs? Yes, no, keep it a C note. Vito, we've been uh you ain't been on in a while, Vito, but uh, you know, Keefe D recently charged in the murder of Tupac Shakur. He's being held without bail. Um, his arraignment just recently got pushed back, but I don't know if you noticed know transcripts recently released from the grand jury, all the grand jury testimony, and one of the people that testified to get this uh to get Keefe D charged was Reggie Wright Jr. He was a former cop, right? Yeah, he was a but he wasn't a cop when 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 Pac died. And he testified. You got a lot of people trying to testify. Now their new spin on it is Orlando didn't really kill Tupac. It was the other guy in the car, Big Dre. Mm -hmm. So by them saying that, it's like Keefe D lied. But what's your thoughts? Do you believe the whole Keefe D? What's your thoughts on this whole Tupac, Keefe D thing? Keep it a C-note. I personally believe it's something bigger coming behind this because why pursue this after all these years? Right. Because Keefe D been snitching on himself and other people for, for years. years. Right. Why all of a sudden? Right. That's my thing. Like, it gotta be something more to it. A cover-up. Maybe some, or, or maybe somebody need to sell some records. And maybe people gonna start going back, buying more Death Row shit, buying more Tupac, buying more Biggie shit. I don't know, man. I got it as a cover-up. You know what I mean? Because I feel the same way. They, they've they known all this for years. They've known all this for years. And if Ke and my thing with Reggie Wright Jr., if you're going to get on the stand now and testify, you should have did that back then when you was head of security. Yeah. But I don't really think they got a strong case. Everybody, Everything is hearsay. Like the one guy that testified... Um, he said that he was Big Dre's roommate or they lived in the same crib and Big Dre told him he really did it. Like, that's all hearsay. All them dudes is dead. You know what I mean? And we got all these people coming out. But uh, some people think it's for Diddy. Because they and they was, Bad Boy is mentioned a lot in that grand jury testimony. Yeah. As far as bounties for chains, as far as dumb rolling with the South Side Crips. But I think it's a cover up, man. I yeah, he, he did. I remember on one of them interviews he was saying that he was asking Puff for some money for something. Yeah, and they try to say that Puff actually gave the money to his uncle Von Zip and Von Zip burnt Keefe D. But yeah, it's either that, it's either they trying to bring Diddy down, because you know he beefing now with the liquor people and all that. So you know what happened when you beef with powerful yeah, people. That it's sense. either that or it's a cover up. I believe it's still a cover up. You know what I mean? Even if them dudes did do it, even if they did do it, I think it was people on Suge and them side in on it. Me personally. I don't know. I don't know if they was trying to take over Death Row, if they had animosity towards, but it's like a lot of weird stuff with that case. I don't, I don't believe, and, and they was out there. It's like, how was the feds watching a person like Tupac, Biggie, even when you go to Malcolm Martin, 
And they all get smoked on your watch. Because they don't care. Yeah, but at least you can put it out there. Who really did it? You've seen it. You see what I'm saying? That's that's my whole thing. But I don't know, man. Keefe D, he is sick, though, so he mess around <laughs> on there and make it through trial. They saying he's he bad sick. I wonder what part Suge is going to play in this whole thing. But you heard Suge say he don't know why Keefe D locked up. He did an interview, TMZ. He said he don't know why Keefe D is locked up. Keefe D in Orlando wasn't the shooters. He took a lot of criticism at the end of the interview. He says free uh, Keefe D. And a lot of people was mad on social media. Like, why would you say free Keefe D if he might have had something to do with killing Tupac? Like on that type time. But uh here's my thing. Uh, because I don't know how long after Suge got locked up, but we it, it'll be on the screen. By the time we edit the video and all that, it'll be on the screen when Suge got locked up for the violation. Because they said immediately after a war jumped off between MOB and Southside Crips. So I wanna know in between that war from Tupac allegedly getting killed. Who was the one to be able to mediate for Orlando Anderson, the Southside Crip, to come to court for Suge and nothing happened to him? You understand what I'm... Because remember, he came to uh, Suge probation here and they paid him to testify. Hmm. They paid Orlando Anderson to come to court and say Suge didn't do nothing. And Suge still got violated, got to seven years when he went to jail. You don't remember that? Oh, you talking about when he went to jail the first time? Yeah, after Pac got killed, Mm -hmm. Suge paid Orlando Anderson to come to his probation hearing and say that he didn't do nothing. Suge was helping him. But what I'm saying is if you're in the middle of a war, who's the one that mediated that? Yeah. How do you stop in the middle of a war? Like, I know we won right now, but I need to pay you some money to come to court. That don't make no sense. Yeah, the dude, if you're not trying to go to jail. Fuck nah, that don't make no sense, man. We talking about dudes dying. You talking about you going to pause a war. No, maybe the war didn't pause, but whoever, Orlando may, maybe needed to check. But the war is over, Orlando, allegedly. Yeah, but if, listen, if, the, if you going to war with somebody and one of the niggas you, you, you want to get at, wouldn't you rather him be on the streets than be in jail? So maybe that's a that's killing two birds with one stone. I'm gonna get a check for keeping this nigga out of jail, and I can still get at him if need be. Yeah, but you missing the bigger picture, Vito. If I can have somebody come in between and mediate and go to Orlando like uh, Orlando Anderson like that, then I can go put a that same amount of money to find out where Orlando be at and get him smoked. True. You see what I'm saying? It don't add, to me. It don't add up. Like you could smoke, even you could pay him to go to court, and then follow him home, and some, none of that happened in the middle of a war. That's what I can't explain. That's why I think it's all funny. Um, the Arizona Cardinals. It's a lot of NFL execs saying that the Cardinals are going to move on from Kyler Murray after this season. Keep it a see, no. What's your thoughts on that? Um, I don't blame them. I feel like. From the shit I be seeing and shit I be hearing in the media, I feel like his attitude is too fucked up for a nigga who ain't that good. Like, you got to be that guy to be making demands and be cussing your coach out in public and all that shit. He ain't that good. Okay. But let me ask you this. Where do you think he would fit if they move off of him? I don't know. It's a lot of teams that need a quarterback right now, so he can get a job. Um, I know they were saying Minnesota. I don't know why they they just want to move Kirk Cousins. Wow, so, Kirk Cousins is solid. I don't He's know, better than him. but his name is popping up. His name pop up every year. Though. Every but my thing with Kyler is you just paid him all that money last Damn, season. Damn, they just paid him all that. Money. Just paid him, so you you gotta play him. Like they don't want to play him because they don't know if he gonna get hurt again. Yeah. If he get hurt again, then they on the hook for like seventy five million that they owe him. But if you don't play him and all that money that did, did he's owed, ain't nobody going to go trade for him. Maybe they the, don't know what they're getting. Maybe the Redskins. The Commanders or the Washington oh, football the team. Washington, yeah. Um, or the Giants, even though they just paid Dan. Nah, nah. Maybe Oak, uh, Vegas. Yeah. 
Vegas, because Jimmy, I don't know about Jimmy. Jimmy hurt right now. Yeah, I know. Jim, I'm, but I'm saying I don't know about Jimmy. He hurt every year. Every year. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I don't know about Jimmy. It might be over for Jimmy. Yeah, and and, and whatchamacallit, they coach. He need to be on the clock, too. Who that? The Vegas clo- coach. Uh, McDaniels? Yeah. You know what I mean? How long are you going to ride off of uh, Belichick Wade? But you know what I don't understand? How these coaches become head coaches, get fired, go down to some type of coordinator, and work their way, a couple years later, work their way back into a head coach job. Give some new blood a fucking chance. Right. Yeah, it's a revolving door. How about The Rock? He's invited your man, Pauls, Colin Kaepernick, to go play in the uh, XFL. What's your thoughts on that? Should Kaepernick do that? Yeah. He, he claimed he want to play football. Go do it. They ain't got to be at the NFL level. Right. Prove yourself. Right. That's, Prove that, that you can still, you in shape, you still can play. Right. I agree with that. That's what he definitely needs to do. Because at, at this point... It can't be about money because the NFL, he he got a big contract for the NFL. Right. He sued the NFL, got paid, and he got the uh the endorsement from Nike after he, he right. went through his shit. So he definitely should have some money. Right. Yeah, he just want to be able to laugh in their face again and say, after all that, I made some more money off of y'all. Or, again, it may be part of his social justice movement where he's going to keep running the movie like they blocking me, they blocking me. Instead of going to the XFL, if you really want to play football, go to the XFL. Mm -hmm. And if you get busy, it's a chance a a team may call you, maybe even for a backup job, you know what I mean? But uh, Bleacher Report, they recently just dropped a top top seven duos coming into the NBA season. Now, they mixed them up east and west. But I want to know, let's start in the West. I want to know the top five duos coming into the season in the Western Conference. Oh, just in the West? Yeah, just in the Western Conference. Just them teams. And then we'll do Eastern Conference. But I set it off. And I know a lot of people are going to get mad with my list. But at number five, I'm going LeBron James, Anthony Davis from the Lakers. They still, even though, you know, they in and out of lineup, they still get busy when they're um, in the lineup. At four, people probably going to be mad about this. I got De'Aaron Fox and DeMontis Sabonis from the Kings. At three, I'm going Luka and Kyrie. At two, I'm going Durant and Booker. And at one, I'm going to Chance. I'm going to Joker and Jamal Murray. That's my top five duos coming out of the Western Conference. Who you got, Vito? Keep it a C note. All right. I'm going to go. I'm going to go to Kings at five. Their duo. Okay. The Aaron and yeah. Sabonis. Okay. At four, I'm going to go to Lakers. Okay. At three, I'm going to go to Clippers, if healthy. If healthy. Okay. That's Kawhi and PJ. Yeah, yeah. Okay. At two, I'm going to go to Nuggets. And at one, I'm going to go to Suns. Okay. And now the Suns, they they got multiple players. So you got to verify when you're saying the Suns. Which duo? Oh, um, Booker and KD. Okay. Booker, KD. Okay. That's cool. And I didn't put the words in there because I don't know what Clay is going to be. Because Clay hasn't been looking like Clay. I agree. That's why I didn't put the Warriors in. Yes, I didn't put the Clippers in just because of what you had to say before you put them on your list, if healthy. See, but only my only thing is, when they are healthy, they play like their self. Clay has been playing health or so-called healthy, but he still hasn't been looking like himself. At least a lot of them look like their self when they play. Well, but but here's the thing. I'm I'm just saying, from what I've seen the last two and a half, maybe three years, I can no longer say if healthy because I know them guys not going to be healthy. I this don't is think they hurt. I, maybe not, but I don't know. I Right now, I can't use that line for them no more. All right, let's go Eastern Conference. Coming into the season, the top five duos in the Eastern Conference. Keep it a C, know who you got. I'm going five. I'm going Miami Heat, Jimmy Butler, Bam Adebayo. At four, 
I'm going Chicago Bulls, DeMar DeRozan, Zach Levine. At three, I'm going Cleveland Cavaliers. I'm going Donovan Mitchell, Darius Garland. At two, I'm going Jason Tatum, uh, Jalen Brown, Boston Celtics. And at one, it got to be the new duo, Giannis and Dane. That's my five. And before Sixers fans kill me, I thought about putting Embiid and Maxi up there just on the strength of Embiid. And I know Maxi averaged 20 last year, but we know Harden's not going to be there. He's going to be the second guy, and I got to really actually see him as the second guy before I put him on any duo list. So that's why he didn't. they didn't make my five. Who you got, Vito? At five, I got the Bulls. Okay, DeMar and them. Yeah. At four, I got the Cavs. Okay. At three, I got the Sixers. With Maxi and... No, I'm going hard and Embiid. So you believe Harden would still be here? Yeah, that's if he's there. Okay. At two, I got the Celtics. Okay. And one, I got the Bucks. Okay. Um, let me ask you this: It's a lot of stuff with James Harden to the Clippers, and it's a fatuation. Infatuation. That makes sense. Well, he just want to be home. But did you see the thing where 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 they was gonna uh sign him in Houston or? Get him in Houston, and he started talking about he wanted to win another scoring title. That's why they scrapped the deal for Houston. No. Yeah. Uh, he he wanted to win another scoring title in Houston? Or yeah, in Houston. He oh. told them he can still win another scoring title, and they took. that's how they end up going to get uh, Van Fleet, I guess. But the, you know there was rumors that he was going back to Houston. They said they wanted him, but when he met with the front office, he started talking all this shit mm-hmm. about winning the scoring title, and they excused him. But it's been a holdup. It's just a, it's always holdups in these trades. But for some reason, the Sixers are infatuated with getting Terrence Mann off the Clippers. He's like a a lesser Maxi. Okay. Yeah, I was just trying to understand what the infatuation is because he's not nobody that's going to make a difference in, in a trade. It's not like... If we get Terrence, man, we're going to win five, ten more games on the strength that we got him. You know what I mean? You better off. Ain't Bones on that team? Yeah, yeah, Bones is on that team. You might as well. They have no, the, the Sixers right now have no firepower off the bench. No, they don't. They don't shit. They don't have too much firepower on the start. Right, right. They this, do, but they don't use it right. I, I, I might go out on a limb right here. No cap, call me an Uber. You might want to call me an Uber, but I believe this would be the year, being as though he on his last year of his contract, I believe Tobias Harris is going to start hooping. Watch. Oh, that's what they do. He going to start hooping this year, and somebody going to trade for that boy uh-huh. at the deadline. And, and, and ream up. <laughs> and he going to rob all over, over again. <laughs> Wait, watch Ben Simmons start trying to play. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I see that movie happening. Um. One thing, though, Vito, when I was just talking about Phoenix and I was saying which duo because they loaded, me and you was talking. I know you was asking about loaded teams. Are they good for what, the NBA or sports in general? It's in general. Okay. And I don't, me personally, I don't believe loaded teams are good for sport. My thing is, why does everybody frown on it? And just more so in the NBA than any other sports because if you think about it, baseball, they have no salary cap. You can get all the best players, all the highest paid players on one team. Think right. about it. the Yankees had A Rod and fucking Jeter at one point. Right. In um, in what's the name? Football. Think about you got teams that get all the all this firepower. Nobody bets in nah, college basketball. They get all the play. Even AAU, they get all the all the best right. on one team. Right. But as soon as it comes to the NBA, for some reason they frowned upon that. I don't understand why. Why well, is it specifically to the NBA? Well, I think it's the NBA because it's supposed to be the highest level of, of competition in basketball. And as far as sports, why I think it get criticized is because out of all the sports, it's the less players on the team. Them players actually can help change it. Like, even on football, we've talked about it before. 
You can have six, seven loaded dudes, but you got all them dudes out there. You still need multiple players to play good. But even in basketball, you can have all them pieces and still not win. You know why? Because I don't think these guys are really that good no more. But on, on the level that they're on, you can have the best guys on your current level and still not win. No, no, no. But why I'm saying that is because... um. Like, even somebody like Devin Booker, I think if everybody, if it was no teaming up and all that, I think Devin Booker may have played in more than one NBA Finals because he one of them boys that got that, like, killer mentality. Mm -hmm. But I don't, I, I don't think a lot of these dudes really be that good. Like, when you see them go through a, because uh, I remember somebody told me Bosh wasn't really that good. Bosh is tough. Yeah, somebody told me Bosch wasn't really that good. His numbers was inflated in Toronto when he was by himself. That that's with somebody. But what do you want if your numbers are inflated because you're by yourself, and then you go on a team with other people, your numbers go down. Then you go say you ain't shit, right? His numbers and down. that the the person that was telling me that was basically saying if if Bosch was actually played with somebody that was good on Toronto, that would have been his numbers just with one other guy. That's what they were trying to nah, tell me. Bosch was 25 and 10. That's what they were. I called them a Uber. I definitely called them a Uber. But I just think in basketball, man, because it, like, again, I don't know where AAU came from or why it wasn't as big when we was growing up, but you always wanted to be that guy. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But I'm going to ask you this, though, because I think I asked you before. Because I said Devin Booker, but if you put everybody, every superstar in the league on one team, it wouldn't be, we wouldn't have no Jordan or none of that in this era. Because nobody is head over heels better than nobody in this league today. You might got Giannis, he got the motor, but he can't shoot. Or you might got a... Uh, Whoever else you want to name, they got this. But no one guy in the NBA today, and some people say it's due to multiple people being talented, and I don't think it's that. I just don't think these guys that good. No, I could be. Because, like, Phoenix. Phoenix got all them pieces. I don't think they're going to win the championship this year. Yeah, right. So you can have an overload of talent. But Phoenix is the perfect example. Because we don't think they're going to win a championship, but some people value Bradley Bill. Me, I don't value Bradley Bill. I don't look at him as a superstar. Or I don't think he's that good. Bradley Bill is that good. I, I think he's nice, but I don't think he's no suit. What I'm saying is we don't have none of the. We don't have in today's NBA. We don't have a Bean Bryant. It's just flat out better than everybody. Yeah, I, It's I debatable agree. who's better than who. I could agree. That's what I'm saying. Like and the top young players, they're like Tatum, Donovan Mitchell, Booker. All them guys are on the same level to me. Anthony Edwards might can surpass some guys in years to come, but right now, they all on similar levels. Yeah, and even with the older guys, though. Even with the older Oh, they older, so they don't even... But, no, but even you got Luka and them, they're not as young. Luka is better than... He's not on the same level as a lot of the younger guys. He is to me. I don't... I don't he's James Harden, but just bigger. No, he... And he do all the ISO triple dribbles. Triple doubles and all that, though. James Harden was doing that shit, too. He do all the ISO dribbling, holding the rock, and then he'll pull up for a jump shot. Oh, he'll get to that. He's more unstoppable getting to the basket because he's bigger, but he's just a big, bigger James Harden than me. He plays exactly. Nah, like, he got he more in his back. He even said, no, he don't. Yes, he do. He Harden ain't Harden had no, he his... post up and everything. Yeah, Luca yeah, yeah, post yeah. up and everything. Yeah, he he right. got a whole bag. Right. Come right. on, man. But he still, he even said himself, his game, he based a lot of his game on James Harden when he came into the league. Right. And it makes sense because he played just like all the dribbling, all that shit. Right. Even I think I think he's good, but I don't think he's great. Even what I'm even what I'm saying with that, and I know a lot of people gonna say I A D be hurt or A D ain't this and that, but another example is LeBron James. LeBron James been with a curb down. He would have been curved down if he didn't always have that next guy with him just right there. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I I, so I he, think he don't have after do 
everything all game long. No, but what I'm saying is if if it was if we were in the nineties style of basketball, every one team a Nah, star, but that's not true because in the nineties it they it was some loaded teams. It was some teams that had some some players. Yeah, but most of them was through the draft. There's not a but, bunch. But that's just my that's my that's my thing. Like, why does it matter whether it's through a trade or a draft? It's because it's, it's home. It's it's homegrown talent. It's you. It's your player. That's 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 the purpose of you having your own team. You can show that you can make players better, and this, that, and the third. Like that. That's the point of having your own team. Running the team. I made this guy better. I made that guy better. We all won together. You don't see that no more. Because what it does is it's pushing the role players out. When you got three dudes on the team like Phoenix, you basically, nigga, y'all just out here to pass the ball, rebound, and hustle. That's all defense. Y'all not out here for nothing else. It it takes away from them. It, it, it does for certain teams, but it does for other teams. Just think about it. Think about it what it did for... Uh, Mikael Bridges' career when that pushed them over to uh to uh Brooklyn and they had nothing but role players on the team and he shined and everybody seen how good he really was. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. He they could have been knew how good he was, but everything was how? running through them. He, he could. How was they gonna say how good he was if he got Booker? That's and what all I'm. That's dudes? why I'm saying is not good for the league. It but no, he, he was there before they had the the super team. Yes, but my thing, my thing is with that and. Again, I I do give Devin Booker his props, but he don't like he don't look like somebody that the average Joker could play with. Pause. What I mean by that is he give me them vibes. If you ain't that good, nigga, I'm just gonna shoot thirty five shots tonight. Yeah, you know what I mean. He he give me them. So Macau Bridges he, didn't he did play with a lot of guys in, in in college though on the same team. Okay, so let me ask you this before we wrap it up. Being as though you just said, Mikhail Bridges, he was on a team with Devin Booker before any other star come. Mm -hmm. Now, DeAndre Ayton was on a team. Now, if DeAndre Ayton goes over Portland and he start doing what Mikhail Bridges was doing that, uh, last year after he got traded, is it more on Devin Booker? Does that make him look bad? Because like, it's like these nah, guys... Nah, you can't necessarily look, look, make him look bad on the strength that it depends on the scheme that they play. In Phoenix, everything with Devin Booker. And um in Portland, most likely everything's gonna go through that young boy, uh, what's his name? Simmons Simons? Simons. So, everything gonna go through eight and in Portland. I, I don't believe. think so because they got Chauncey. He an older coach. He a throwback yeah, coach. But he also a guard though. Yeah, he a guard. But and the team he played for when he was in his prime didn't go through the big man. When he played for Detroit, they ain't go through the big fella. Yeah. Yeah. Well, speaking I, of Detroit, let me ask you a question. How do you feel about what Ben Wallace said about the impact Melo would have had if he would have went the day they drafted him? Oh, that they wouldn't have won the championship? I kind of agree with that. I don't. I kind of agree with that. Because it go back to what I was saying. Either one of them dudes' uh, career would have been hindered by them all being on that team, either Melo or Tayshawn Prince, because it's the same thing. It's like you can't fully develop. But, but look at it like this. Think about it. Tayshawn Prince did what he did, but he still... It's just a regular guy at the end of the day. So he still would have been that same regular guy coming off behind Melo. Because I seen the interview where Chauncey said if they would have got Melo, they would have won more. Yeah, and I think everybody is going to have a, a, a different view on it. But the way that offense moved, it was like rip running off screens. Uh, it can, like To me, Melo personally didn't fit in. Nah, I think, because think about it. Who was they, who was they for? Remember they had... Uh, stretch four. They had Okor, right? And I don't even know if they he was they starter, but but he wasn't. A, yeah, he yeah. wasn't a starter. I don't even remember who they started was. Who was they starter? Didn't they have McDice at one point? I don't even think McDice started, but Rashi, Rashi, why okay. Rashi starting? Yeah. So think about it. If you Melo started at the three, Melo could shift from three to four because that was when Melo was bigger, right? Think about it. And Prince could shift three to four, and on defense play one, two, three, four. So it could have it could have made it work. I don't know, but, but then, it it it, it kind of throw the machine off then. That depends because Melo well, like Brown was a coach too, so that yeah, might not work. Yeah, and like he's saying, no, you got to look at it from Melo's coming out as arguably he just won a national championship. Mm -hmm. 
You know what I mean? You got some people that's out there saying he's better than LeBron coming into the league. He's more ready. You don't know if, if what Melo you would have got. Yeah, I know what Melo you would have got. You would have got Melo where them old heads, where well, you still had old heads on the team showing you a certain way to play. But Melo would have gave them what they, they still won, and Melo would have gave them what they didn't have. Right. That's a go-to guy. They didn't right. even have that name was winning. Side note, though, I think I think why another reason because Chauncey end up end up being on the team with him in Denver, so maybe that's why he's saying they could have won more. But I think another reason why Ben Wallace is saying it is for all the dogs because Ben Wallace at the end of the day he's a dog that's going to do all the dirty stuff, and I think the way he look at it is. Tayshawn is a dog yeah. that's going to do the, and Melo's not. Yeah, so not. I think that's why his yeah, his his thoughts yeah, yeah, yeah. is like that. It's probably, he probably bi- defensive bias. Yeah, yeah, that might be it. And, you know, Chauncey, again, yeah. he played, they made it to the conference finals together. So he probably looking at it like, yeah, we definitely could have did that. Um, last thing, what's your thoughts about MB playing for Team USA? Do you have anything? He's committed. He's playing for Team USA in 2024. I think he should have, his first time around, he should have played for his own country. Then you come back around maybe a second Well, it time. wasn't, it wouldn't have been for his country. It was out of, it was out of USA or France because he had citizenship over there too. Oh, well, that make more sense to play for the you USA. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, but yeah, so, and uh, he said he wanted to play over here his first time for his son because his son was born over here. And I'm glad he playing, but again, I think that goes back to what I'm saying. If you don't got Joel Embiid on that team, because remember, we we didn't agree on the big fellas that we should have go over there. I think without Joel Embiid over there, that team is pretty I much know. in trouble. I think the big fellas that I named would be better would be better suited for that All Star team. A guy like Jared Allen that don't need no shots, he gonna get every rebound and get every block. He don't need no buckets. Right. But he going to get putbacks. He going to get dunks. And B wants shots. And B need fucking sets ran for him. He want to shoot from the 15 to 18 footer. Yeah. So that's kind of take. That might take away from them. It don't matter, man. When you talking about putting as many of them old dudes that you talking about putting on the team, you going to need Joel and B, bro. That motherfuckers over, overseas is older. I don't care about none what of that. What you talking about? But look, though. What I, I, I will say, though. I think Team USA is totally in a panic, right? Mm -hmm. Because when you really look at the movie, none of these other countries is loaded, like other than Canada. So basically, you putting this whole team together either A for Canada or you think Team USA is just actually going down. We don't have talent like that. I don't, I don't, I think France can be, France can be loaded. Nah, they Spain not. What I'm talking about, none of them teams is loaded like over here. No, like. but I'm talking about if you take the NBA players and put them in their country, Canada, Spain, and France can be loaded. Nah, it's only going to be Canada, man. Canada, and Spain, Spain, Spain and this. France got some players. Yeah, nah, not like back in the day. No, bro. not like back in the day, but they still got some ballers. You know what I mean? And if if all the African players went to a one team. Man, if you if there was just one team with just all them country, their best player can play for one team, one team yeah. USA would be in trouble. That's why USA is always going to still have a little bit of the upper hand because I don't all think, the best players in the league right now is from everywhere they else. They would give USA problems, but I don't necessarily know Man. if they would win. If we do, if we do all the best European, all the best international players right now in the NBA versus the top twelve guys from the United States, with Embiid included, European with guys Embiid going as the U.S. or overseas with with as Embiid with U.S. with Team U.S. Them niggas is going to take it. They're going to nah. win, bro. Hey, I'm, right off top, you got Joker, Luca, Giannis, Giannis, Murray, Murray. That's all you really need. Nah. I'm I'm not saying that's all. I'm bidding when I'm saying that's all you really need. But you then you get to the Wiggins and you, all the Shea Giltris, Alexander. Like, come on, man. They when we if Listen, we if we all, really all I know I've been saying like we actually both recently saying that Joker was looking better. But when they go head up, Joker can't stop him. I'm not saying stopping him. I'm just saying they got enough. Who's going to stop Giannis? Nobody from are, America. Are, are you listen? 
Nobody can stop Giannis, but you can run a system to stop Giannis, like how T Toronto did that time they beat him and the time Miami beat him. Yeah, but I'm talking about Giannis with all these other guys where you can't double off of nobody. That's that's a different true. ball game. That's true. You know, But these still old guys still balling. KD still balling. Man. Steph still balling. What's your thoughts on it, people? We actually, we might got to put that list together. What's your thoughts on it, people? I just said that... If we put all the international players on one team and let them play against the USA players with Embiid on that team, the international team would definitely win. That should be the next All-Star game. That should have been the All-Star game for years now. They got enough international players to do it. What's your thoughts on it, though, people? You agree with me? Should you call me an Uber? Keep it a C note. Let me know. We about to wrap this episode up. Appreciate everybody for tuning in. Again, if this is your first time tuning in, salute to you. Do us a favor. Please hit the sub button, like button, and the bell to stay notified when we drop new content. Don't be afraid to leave a comment if you agree, disagree, want to correct us on something, or if you just want to call us an Uber. Let us know in the comments. Make sure you keep it a C note. And make sure you share this video with someone that likes to talk sports and entertainment like you so that we can all talk that talk together. As always, I am your boy, Brown. To the left of me, we got Vito. Please tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend to tell everybody. Keep it a C note. We holler at y'all. This is what I'm feeling like. Da, 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 da. Let me tell you what I'm feeling like. Not at all.